Hey, now that's a little bit better. We got this plastic walls out. We start to get a sense of what the place is going to feel like without all of the obstructions that were in here before. We're using those as drop cloth. It won't hurt to throw them on the floor for right now. And we've prepared uh, the space for spraying the ceiling by covering the windows with this. Uh, we use the plastic here as a drop cloth, but we've got. I like to use the. Um, I guess I don't have any right here. Maybe it is. This stuff is great. This is smaller. This is painter's tape with, I think, 24 inches of plastic. It's folded up on the edge right on it. So you can tape that along and then pull 24 inches of plastic off it. Then I have the 48 inch stuff, which is a bit longer, uh, which I used on these, all these windows. So I just came through the middle first and hung that down, and then I went across the top and hung that down. And this isn't exhaustively as if we're gonna paint around this trim. Uh, what you do to paint the wall is either cut in carefully, if you're lazy, or you pop your trim off and paint, and then you put your trim back on. So uh, this is simply for paint settling down for, and you know spraying around in here, all the paint particles in the air. Uh, they may settle when they're still tacky, and then you have like permanent dust, basically. Um, the customer's gonna refinish or replace these hardwood floors. And most of the baseboard is coming out of here, so you know I'll throw the um, drop cloth on the floor more so up onto the baseboard that is is there, and rather than protecting the whole of the floor, because uh, all of this is going to change, which is kind of ideal to work from the top down. And to start with, we're going to put primer on all of our raw drywall mud and all of our raw drywall itself. And I like to use uh, uh, prep right pro prep right pro block pro block. From Sherwin Williams, and really, in a lot of the other renovations that I've done, I get a layer of this, a solid layer of this, up on the ceiling, and it works just fine for a ceiling paint. And a lot of people apparently do that, according to the Sherwin Williams guys. What I did here, though, was because it's got more of a sheen than a ceiling paint, um, it's not necessarily ideal for a ceiling that has a lot of topography or problems and what have you. Because you can see as I put some up here on the raw drywall that was coming through, I did so not only to prime it, but also to get a sense of with the shine of it, um, whether or not we have any issues. And I don't know if it's worth showing you because we've got things like lights and stuff flashing on it. But basically, you can believe me when I say it looks great. Um, we don't have any transitional problems right in here where we've tried it so far, which is awesome. And of course, we've got to prime the rest of this here. And then we will be applying, once that these areas are primed, from the whole, the whole surface from one end to the other, right on over our primer, we'll get this off the shelf flat white ceiling paint eminence from Sherwin-Williams. And that will tie everything together and make it homogenous. We'll leave primer down onto all these repairs that are on walls. That'll just be primer there, primer up and around these corners here, and primer there. Um, and the reason I protected the windows is because we're just gonna have overspray from the ceiling painted white. There'll be overspray right along here, and then the customer's gonna paint her walls as she so chooses, and have her floors refinished, and it's gonna be awesome. Um, some areas where we had some trouble. This little spot here you can see has got wet mud on it because it just made a wiggle in the line between the wall and the ceiling that I didn't like. Same was going on over here a little bit. Um, the ends of these walls where the old header came over the doorway that was here, I didn't want to use a piece of corner bead in there. It's just really difficult to get the very edge of the corner bead to line up with the edge of this corner unless you smash a bunch of material all away and really mess around there. So I'm going to basically sculpt it in with, uh, with mud by loading all three sides, and then I'll use a sanding block to carry the plane of this wall out and off, the plane of that wall out and off, and then dress up the front of it until that is ultimately, you know, coplanar with this here. So really right now, both all three sides of these um, are a little heavy with mud as they needed it to be, and that area there, and uh, any little holes from stapling the plastic down that we had over these doorways um, has been, have been spackled. And we've loaded up this area down here like we were talking about to get that wiggle out. And this area up here is still kind of going and we've got the fan running on those there because they're kind of big and thick. In fact, I may, since I ran the fan when I was working here on both of these for some time, I may run it over there before I go and leave it there, you know, pointed there. And um, she can turn it off at her leisure. Um, feeling good here. Really loved this when I was able to paint right through the existing and over the new and right out to the existing again. 
We've got some dry spots that are missing primer and stuff, but don't let that fool you. I think overall this is a, a really big change to this whole house. You know, for it ended up being around 10 grand plus or minus, you know, five or 10% or whatever to do this whole thing. But, uh, you know, in the scheme of things, your living, your holidays, your day to day, it was just such a habit trail in here before. You know, there was a doorway right here, and then you went around into this room where you were in this room and you walk along, and then you go into this middle room that had a closet in it and a door and a door and a door. And I guess this used to be the doorway you can see here into this room was here, and that was a solid wall. Um, and then since then, somebody had turned this into a solid wall, filled this all in, smashed a doorway hole out of that over there and put this closet in to turn that into a first floor bedroom. I don't know why you need that makes a one, two, three, four bedroom house with a full bath on the first floor and a half bath upstairs. Just a funky kind of a thing to do here. Um, we have some more paint protection to do in here. We've got to hang that same plastic down over the cupboards and uh, she's going to clear off her countertops tonight and we'll get that ready tomorrow because I basically don't want to paint and work on drywall at the same time. I'm going to save painting until the drywall work is done and I can just take the tools and stuff for that right out of here as well. It's just got to be finished, finished, finished. I don't want dust in here and paint. And so we've got these areas of drying, these areas of sanding, vacuuming, and then finish covering stuff up and then painting. I may post this right along with the finished video of the space so that because um, I know we've been dragging it out, but it'll give you a sense of what it feels like to have this kind of thing going on in your place. It just seems like small changes every time there's a video. Small changes, small changes. Now, there's a lot of work in getting this to look perfect when it's done or as close to perfect as we could get. And we got to take that fan down too. So, okay, next video finished. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you.